<clears throat> All right, we are live. Welcome to Trucking Answers. I'm going live. It's a Tuesday. Can you believe it? It's live on Tuesday. Who is going to show up at the last minute? Who knows? We have no idea. No way to know. Maybe nobody. I'll be talking to myself. We're going to talk about the Drive Safe Act for a few minutes here today. I just thought I'd pop in. The ATA is all about bringing this thing back, resurrecting it from the depths of uh, despair where we left it in the uh, coffin of yesterdayness. But the ATA is committed to bringing this thing back. It's unbelievable. They just won't let it go. The Drive Safe Act would allow people 18 to 21 to drive, which I don't really have a problem with. That's okay with me. The real problem with it is uh, all the things that go along with it, of course, because nothing uh, that's good is ever great like that. So a lot of different things go along with it. What the heck? Go <coughs> all right, so we are back here live. I had the thing pressed wrong look we're going to talk about the drive safe act today uh, this is mark with trucking answers it's just crazy who knows what's going on here the drive safe act the ata is bringing this thing back from the dead they've resurrected it brought it out from its coffin where we had put it along with duncan hunter and uh, so they're trying to bring it back they've just put another press release out about it it's tuesday we're live i can't believe we showed up live here today look this would allow people that are 18 to 21 to go ahead and drive, all right, uh, uh, interstate. That's no problem. I don't have any problem with that if people are being, uh, you know, trained or whatever. That's no problem. The real problem with it is, of course, all the things that go along with it. There's nothing good comes from these kind of things. So uh, what good comes from it? No good comes from it. That's the thing about it. So what they would require is an in-cab camera. They'll require speed limiters they'll require automated braking they'll require all these things yeah. all right so let's try this again uh, how are we doing here i'm back uh the stream stopped for a second Look, everybody, thanks for coming in. We're going to talk about this Drive Safe Act for a few minutes. Steel Horse, hey, what's going on there today? Almond is here. Everybody's here. Alex, the driver. Marty is here. Brandon, Kim, thank you for showing up today on Tuesday. Man, it's, uh, it's a Tuesday. I can't believe that we're live. We're going to talk about this. The ATA is bringing this back today, the state Drive Safe Act. Can you believe it? They won't let it go. Multiple live streams. Yes, Jared, I'm going to try to come in uh, <clears throat> a few more times uh, during this week because it's special week. Matt's is going to be here today, of course. Hey, what's going on there? I'm doing great out here today. The ATA just won't let this Drive Safe Act go. How about uh, automated braking will be required on these trucks? You'll be required to have a speed limiter and, and an end cab camera. That's for people that are 18 to 21. That's going to, of course, come to everybody else's truck. They just won't let it go. Charles, hey, what's happening today? Circle of death. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the circle of death came, but it is back. The stream is back up. Uh, 300C, nice. Hello, what's going on? 5.7. What is the Drive Safe Act? The Drive Safe Act from Todd Young and Trey Hollingsworth from Indiana. Thanks a lot for that. Would allow people 18 to 21 to drive interstate. All right, so, and I don't really have a problem with that as long as everybody is trained. The problem is all this other goofy stuff that comes along with it. And plus, the ATA is a huge supporter of it. So, of course, it's not going to be great. It requires an in-cab camera. It will require automatic braking. It will require speed limiters. You know, it'd be interesting to find out, uh, you know, how much money Lytics has given to uh, Todd Young and Hollingsworth and all these other people. How about that? How much money have they contributed to these people's campaigns that's the problem the automatic braking is dangerous the automatic braking is like the worst thing ever in my truck it picks up street signs and everything else i don't like it it doesn't make anybody a safer driver and in the winter in the winter time is when it's the worst and so i'm not a huge fan of it at all i don't think 
you know, the if I don't mind an alert, but you should be the one driving the truck. People are going to depend on this stuff too. They just did a big study about this for car drivers. And people that get this automatic uh, parking and all these sensors around their car, they tend to rely on it and then they end up having an accident when they get a car that doesn't have it. It's a real problem. Let's start a strike and get paid. I'm not a fan of that, certainly. We should strike from low-paying jobs, but a nationwide strike isn't going to do any good. They'll come to your house and drag you out and make you drive, really. In-cab cameras at speed limiters and automatic braking, yeah. Because here's the thing, when it comes to those trucks, it's going to come to your truck too. They'll mandate it and say, oh, well, look how great this is for everybody else. Why not, uh, you know, why not have it for all drivers? Let's have, it made such a great impact that, that uh, we'll just have all drivers uh, have it. And so that isn't going to be great. It's going to come to your truck next. And instead of having the company mandate it, the government will be the one mandating and you won't have any choice but to drive the truck with it. Uh, how many 18-year-olds can pass a drug test? Ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's an interesting question. I like the camera facing the road, but don't want one looking at you. Yeah. Currently, this law is only for a forward-facing camera, but Lytics, you know, loves both of those cameras. So uh, believe me, the one that's going to face you is is coming. You should always have your own camera anyway. The one that the company puts in there, they own that footage. Whether you get it or not or can get it, you know, they may not give it to you. And, of course, you can't get it right on the sign, right on the side of the road. Somebody hits you coming through a red light or whatever, you have no way to access that footage. So you want one where you can access the footage yourself on the spot. <laughs> ATA and big companies trying to exterminate the little ones. Uh, yeah, well, most companies are small companies, but uh, that's absolutely true. The less competition they have, the better it is for them. If that's the case, you'll go back to fixing cars. That might be, a, they probably have a camera in the car shop too, really. Uh, the ATA is not great for the professional uh, driver. That is certainly the case. They don't like uh, the driver. They are the uh, voice, as they say, of large companies, even though any company can join. Mostly it's the large companies. You have automatic braking and uh, myself driving poorly now in your car, expecting it to warn me. If it give a warning on the dashboard or something, that'd be one thing. But when the truck interacts with the with the truck itself and hits the brakes, I hate it. I, I don't think it's safe at all. <laughs> Dwight is late. Nobody can be late today because there's no uh, scheduled time today. Just popped in to see what would happen, and uh, there's actually people here, so that's really good. Automatic braking is just uh, going to cause a lot of road rage because the person behind, yeah. You know, and when it applies the brakes, it applies the brake lights as well. So so because I we tried that here. We uh, tested that. It does put the brake lights on. And so it sees a road sign, hits the brakes, and the person behind you is like, what is going on? It doesn't make any kind of sense. There are cams from uh, time to time, yeah, depending on the shop that you work in, right? Is there anything wrong with running a personal cam in addition to company cam? No, I mean, absolutely. You want to be able to get the footage uh, at the time that you need it, which could be right then, right when somebody runs a light or you're accused of something. Not, oh, I'll get it in six months. Show the cop right on the spot what's going on. Hey, Teresa, good afternoon. It's good to see you here today. You drive in L.A. The last time you had a sub-brake truck, it scared some car. It cut me off. Yeah, it, uh, you know, it doesn't do great. I don't like it. The winter, it's worse because it doesn't seem to understand. Worst case scenario, they should at least say if it's under, say, 40 degrees out, that the thing doesn't break itself. That would be what they should do. A uh, new mic is working good. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, did the other one have an echo? I'm sorry about that. Uh, truck uh, must be dreaming. So, yeah, it's uh, Michael. It's surprising to see me on a Tuesday, but hey, it's Mid America Truck Show week. It's a special week, so it's special uh, video. Switching it all up, right? All crazy. Look at Got the whole thing set up. Nice. You're being offered 35 cents as a team driver. Training for six months. Is that good? No. You average 50,000 miles a week. That would be great. That'd be over uh, 15,000 miles a week. <laughs> I just had to say it. You put it up there. 35 cents? No way, right? What company is that? I can only imagine. And are there going to be three of you in the truck? The collision alert hits the brakes hard. Yeah, and signs, overhead, boards, and stuff. And it hits the brakes because it thinks you're going to have an accident. 
What the heck? How is that safe? Do you think going to have young people doing that? No way. Uh, they hire you to drive the truck. Apparently, they only hire you to sit there and literally steer. People talk about steering wheel holders, but then they make all this stuff in the truck that drives the truck itself around. So they're basically making us into steering wheel holders because that's the last thing we can do. Uh, your uh, safety record is crap, so we have to have it. Yes, <clears throat> everyone else should have the uh, have it. ATA companies can't recruit because of the cameras. They want to solve recruiting. They want to solve their problem that they made themselves, right? I mean, <clears throat> that's what it's their own problem. So then they and so they go. Oh well, let's just uh, have young people. San Angelo, Texas. I was stationed in San Angelo at uh, Goodfellow Air Force Base for some time. Uh, recruitment problem. Yeah. What do you think about Garmin? I don't know anything about these. Uh, about that. I those. That's one of those that are like four hundred bucks or something, right? So uh, I'm not sure about that. I wish Garmin would send me one of them. Somebody send them a message and tell me to send one over here. Werner owes you four hundred fifty dollars. How can you get your money? Uh, you could, you know, report it to the state for unpaid wages if you can prove it. I guess you could sue them in small claims court. Good luck with that. But the best way to do that, if you're owed money and you're an employee, is report it to the state. And uh, that'd be what Nebraska probably believe for them because that's where they're headquartered and that's where they owe you the money. Uh, what happens uh, with all the older trucks out of commission? Yeah, they'll only have be driving these people in new trucks, certainly. <laughs> Bendix does it, but when the cruise is set, well, that's still no good, really. <clears throat> Heavy rain, all right, it, that turns it off in my truck. Pre-pass, overhead signs, everything you go under or near, around, the stupid brakes come on. But when it rains or snows, the thing stops working, so I don't know what they're going to do about that. Uh, Josh, yeah, file a claim with the Division of Wage and Hour. Yeah, go report them for unpaid wages. Say they owe me money, and uh, they didn't pay me. And try and get your money. Let the state go after them to get your money. It won't cost you anything that way. You got a Garmin 780. How much is that? How much does a Garmin 780 cost? Texas uh, trucker, I'm on a home time. That's excellent. Hopefully, that will get you enough time to get to the truck show on Friday. I'm going to tell everybody I'll be out, and there'll be a lot of these live things that pop up on Friday. So, they'll come and go. I mean, I don't know how many there'll be, so you might get a lot of notifications. So, because I don't know how the show's going to go. Your Volvo 780 does not give a false warning, but but still, <laughs> but you still hate it. At least Volvo has it figured out. They're always on top of safety anyway. Automatic brakes are set up to shut down at a certain temperature, not on our trucks. System is tied to the sensor and the engine. No way. Not, uh, not, no way. They break, uh, maybe that's on your trucks or it's maybe it's a company setting. That's interesting. Will the law apply to everyone? Well, the law will only apply to 18 to 21 year olds starting uh, so that they can drive interstate. And they have to have 400 hours in the truck and 240 hours of drive time. But that law then, look, they'll say, oh, well, look how great this camera is. You should mandate them in all trucks. It will come to a truck to near you, certainly. Commercial vehicles should have a faster speed limit than the pedestrians. Yeah, uh, there's speed limiters on here too. 65 will be the maximum amount that they'll allow. And so then they'll say, look how great this is. Let's limit everybody else. That limits your money too. The slower you go, the less you can drive every day. So... You know, if you're rolling around at 55 miles an hour, you just can't get as many miles. And out west, going slow is ridiculous. California just introduced a bill to ban uh, diesel powered trucks. Oh, yeah, in 2050. And I don't think that's going to come to pass because they're not going to allow even trucks that are not registered there to come into the state that are diesel powered. I mean, they're going to have to push that back. We'll be dead before that happens. There's so many diesel powered trucks. I think it's crazy. Oh, that garment's 500 bucks. Man, that's a lot of money. Uh, that's a that's a crap load of money. They're trying to get more information to build better autonomous trucks. They are a long way from that. They can't even figure out the sensor thing in the rain. They That's what they need to figure out. Oh, the diesel cam 785 is $500. Man. So the CMS braking is forced now. It can't be shut off. It cannot be shut off on our trucks other than if you covered it. So, No. It's built into the thing. If it sees an object, it hits the brakes, and on, it, there's no temperature sensor here. You sat for the 72 hours out of the load. Yikes. Oh, you're still breaking down? Yikes. Can't get mild from the people. So you're turning your two-week notice. 
thinking about Smith Transport. Oh, the the Roaring Springs one and the black trucks. Yeah, in Pennsylvania. Yeah, right. So the Garmin 780s, 400. Man, and people rolling around in money out here. You going to a wedding? Been on the truck for two months. Wow. No home time. But did you want to come home? You know, that's the thing. Oh, Corey is done with the CR England contract. We should celebrate that here. That is the best news I've ever heard. Great. You can move on somewhere else. California should ban trucks. Maybe we should ban going to California. That would be the thing. They don't want trucks. Then tell them to come and get their stuff in uh, Yuma. They can come and pick it up. What about self-driving trucks? Amazon is rolling them out. No way. 2020, they're not allowed on the road yet. All self-driving trucks still have someone in them. Uh, so you thought that was on cruise. I think it depends on how the system is set up. Uh, that's on all Freightliners. They will not engage below a certain temperature. Not I, I drive a Freightliner, and uh, I know it engages in the wintertime because I don't like it. Rand McNally, GPS is 200 from Best Buy. That's uh, that's better. You find I have to make a lot more corrections at 55 than you do at 80. Yeah, at 80, you can just blast through everything, right? It's different in other companies. I don't know why ours doesn't work then. You know, none of them here turn off at all. Because they're like, oh, it's a safety feature, you know. They set the cruise at 68 and the pedal at 65, so you don't keep your foot on the pedal, right? And they make you use the cruise. The automatic braking comes on and you have to deal with it. I don't like it, you know. I don't don't let the truck drive for me. I don't understand, you know, that. Uh, what do I think about Smith? I'd have to look Smith up. Just bought, oh, thanks, James. I appreciate that very much today. Just bought an Overdrive 8 Pro by Ram McNally. $600, woo. So does that have a camera in it and uh, everything? Is that like an all-in-one deal? What's going on with that? I'd like to see a video about CFI. Uh, you know, a lot of people write to me from CFI and say that it's a great place. That once they get in there, they like it. So they do they do have a long uh, you know, waiting time for detention and stuff like that. So if they can keep you running and you don't have to sit around a lot, it wouldn't be bad from what people have talked to me about. If you get England to fire you, it voids your contract. Oh, just to get a lot of safety points. Oh, really? Well, but the problem is with these companies, when they fire you, then they they really hit your DAC up. I mean, you'd have to really consider that. Uh, and you probably still, you wouldn't have to stay there the month, but you'd still owe them the money. They can't, they wouldn't say you don't owe us money anymore. I don't think they would ever do that. But you don't want to get, especially if you're new, get... Um, a company to really badmouth you on your deck. It's tough to get that changed. How much longer will manual trucks be around? Uh, forever. Automatics are taking over. Yeah, like they're like seventy per five percent of the market, but they're uh, but they'll always be manuals, even in cars. There's still manual cars around. They still sell them new. I had a Focus not that long ago that was a manual. They'll always be manual trucks. Always. Four twelve nineteen truckers are shutting down. Uh, I think I'll work on that day. That's what I think. And uh, believe me, I'll be working. There'll be probably 40 or 50 trucks at least that shut down that day. It won't do any good. No, any companies that will take someone with six months under contract. A lot of places honor that. You'll have to call each place because I've heard a lot of places honor it. By the way, you're at six months. Nine months is only three months away. Even though England is killing you or whatever. In three more months, right? I think their contract's nine months you're out of it. It'll take you a while to find a job and get started there anyway. That's all I'm saying. It's three months. Somebody has to make more corrections at 55. It's a lot more work than driving at 80. Yeah, you're it's 80. You're concentrated. CFI was terrible under XPO. Much better now. Okay, so there's right. Get off the interstate if you drive 55. I don't understand limiting the speed and having the speed limit. This this oh, I did, did a big study about that. The difference in speed is the real problem out there. Uh, they will, oh, so they'll void the money. If why wouldn't everybody just go get fired there? Then that's not a bad, uh, that's not a bad idea. Everybody should go there, get their CDL, and then get fired. You know, they may stop. They may just stop firing people. Then I hate automatic trucks. It's great, but at the same time, you want a manual. I like the manuals, but you know, I'm used to these automatics now. We've had them for years. What happened to the crap company of the week was killed by lawyers. <laughs> You're working at GP Transco. I just saw one of your trucks yesterday. I love that place. K 
came after watching a video so far. It's good. That's great. That uh, guy, Sergi or whatever, he writes to me all the time from GP Transco. I'm hoping to see them at the truck show on Friday. And uh, their trucks come through town all the time. You've been dabbling in the snow. The camera makes it look like you have a nosebleed. Yeah, that's correct. If you drive an automatic, you're still not a real driver. Well, that's all they give us here to drive, you know. Crete takes people at six months. Yeah, a lot of places will take you. It's this contract. Some of these places honor the contract. Oh, it's 12 months and nine months if you're a veteran. That's how they did it. So you're halfway. It's something you got to consider then. Now it's more of a consideration. Six months is a long time. Can override the collision by uh, turning the cruise control on and off three times. But the ones in our 2016 might be older. That's interesting. I'll have to try it. Oh, England. So they went to a year. Don't they say nine months on their site? Maybe I, maybe I didn't realize that was for veterans. Starting Swift flatbed. Oh, really? Watch for you on the road. Recruiter says dedicated triangle route. Hmm. Point eight. Yeah, they do a lot of that stuff there. I don't know how much flatbed work they do. If you're on a dedicated route, won't be too bad, I guess. All right. So nine months for veterans and a year for everybody. So now it's worth quitting at six months. But make sure you can go somewhere first. You'll have to talk to them first. You're at CFI. Oh, somebody's already there. But uh, should be something even better. Always there's something better. Yeah, you don't want to jump from company to company. You have to decide, you know, how many cents, what's the difference in pay? For two cents or whatever, no way do you leave. No way. But, you know, for eight, ten cents, then, then yeah. Dial CR England up their contract to 12 months and it's nine months. Hmm. Almost any uh, company. Where'd we go? We'll take you with six months. There's a lot of places. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It'd be tough to find a, a place that wouldn't now. Ford Focus, isn't that a self-pedaling car? You know, it's bigger than my uh, current car. My uh, Sonic is even smaller than that. England, I never recommend England to people, certainly. Tuesday, you're live. I know. Live on Tuesday, just popping in for a little bit today because I saw this Drive Safe Act is all over the news because the ATA is putting out tons of press releases about it. They're trying to push it back out there. You go where the pay goes. Who cares if it's an automatic? Yeah, people, but you know, it's fun driving the manual around, really. If you're looking for a job making 15 to 18, ooh, and home every weekend, Premier uh, Transport out of Forest Park. Do they hire all over the country? Creed takes you right out of school. If the school's on their approved list, that's even better. Would I recommend ABF, Holland, or uh, FedEx? Yeah, all three of them, right? At FedEx is cameras and no union. So I don't know if you do better at ABF or Holland. Maybe. Auto means not a real driver. Does uh, auto mean make the trailer shorter? People say that, oh, you're not a real driver, you know, but come on. It's still, uh, it's still a truck. There's still a couple of companies that will hire you with that contract. There are. That is true. Werner doesn't care about it, but uh, a lot of the medium size. It depends. I've heard companies say, oh, you know, they honor that contract, that non-compete. They won't hire you. You'll have to call before you do anything and tell them anything there at England. You'll have to call and make sure the place will take you, you know, get it all set up and then leave. That's how it, that's how it works. How do team drivers get paid? There'll be a rate, 60 cents or whatever, and each of you get half of it for all the miles. <clears throat> so you get split. Some teams are salary, but that's harder to find. I'll play that game if you drive an automatic personal vehicle. You're, yeah. What if you drive an automatic vehicle? You're not a real car driver. And almost every vehicle at work is an automatic, and then the people complain about having a manual. Well, I'll be at Matt's all weekend. I'll be there all day Friday. That's when I will be at Matt's. Looking for a company out of Alabama. Yeah, who's who knows what's going on in Alabama? ELD exempt local with eight uh, days. You're able to go further than 100 miles a month. Yeah, if you uh, if you get that like that. Have you thought about doing some upcoming videos on Encore Express? No. Yellow, it would be the same as my Holland, that kind of thing. FedEx Freight, I talked to a guy who likes it there, but they have in-cab cameras. Old Dominion and Estes, I've recommended those kind of places. To people, but not done a video about them. I like how traffic behind me gets mad because it can't move as fast as automatic. I don't, it shifts slow, but at least you don't have to shift it yourself. Bulkmatic opened a new position for line haul, 75 cents. Wow, out of Bulkmatic and a new Mac. That's really something. There's a Bulkmatic terminal here in Lafayette. 
Don't let Sierra England test you out in an automatic truck, then you'll be restricted. That isn't any problem anymore, I don't think. So many trucks are automatics, I don't see that as a problem. A few years ago, maybe. But a lot of the trucks come with automatics, I don't think it's as big a problem as it used to be. Oh, that place hires east of I-35. You work for ABF and they only have forward cameras in their trucks 2017 and up. That'd be good. But I like the idea that you're getting paid for all your time there. You know, all of your time, literally all your time. And there's a pension too, which is really nice. Uh, Swift, England and Knight, please stay as far away from me as truck as possible. Part of that, look, part of that is the trainers. The company doesn't enforce a policy where trainers have to have experience. A lot of experience. You know, six months is not experience to uh, train somebody. You saw UPS nearly every driver has the phone in their hand. What the heck? Who has the phone in their hand? Why aren't they using a blue parrot headset? I'm going to team for my dad with his business, but a year uh, too late getting your CDL. Well, look, hey, you never know what can happen in the future. Uh, Delroy, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And thanks for being here today on a special Tuesday episode with the Drive Safe Act. England pays 28 cents split. Awesome. 14 cents for all miles. Yes. You can drive solo for 50 cents a mile and make more than 14 cents and uh, try to sleep while driving. Oh, who at England makes 50 cents a mile? You wouldn't start at 50 cents at England. Super truckers here. Thanks for coming. Who do I work for? I never say who I work for. Thank you for asking. Uh, that keeps them out of my videos and I don't recruit for them either. Isn't every driver on YouTube I watch always recruiting for their company? What's up with that? Let They got recruiters. Let them do that. I don't recruit for my company, so uh, we have a recruiting bonus. I pass it up, keeps them out of my videos. Do you know Heartland Express doesn't hire people with automatic? That's really unusual, and that's going to change. Believe me, we changed. We're like, oh, okay, we'll take automatic. So that is absolutely going to change. In a few years, I think it's only a few years. I thought 10 years. It's going to be a few years. That uh, that restriction won't make any difference. <laughs> the super truckers here. All right. Alabama, yes. How can we make our industry pay more when we haven't adjusted? You should get a raise every year. Some companies have given five raises last year. I mean, holy mackerel. Automacs are good enough. Just hate them going down the mountains in bad weather. Some don't pick up the Jake break. Oh, they sh your company should change that. That should be a setting, hopefully. And uh, on the road in an automatic, you should have manual uh, ability enabled, which they, the company can turn that on. Yeah, how is ABF pay? It should be really good. ABP, Blue Parrot, yes. Why is a UPS can't afford a Blue Parrot headset? Come on. <laughs> yeah, Dwight, exactly. These FedEx drivers are good at cutting too close. Sometimes uh, there's going to be bad drivers everywhere, really. Uh, I mean, don't go to England. Go where they pay 50 cents. Okay, I thought there's nobody in England that makes 50 cents. James, I work for Swift. People have found me out. I'm solo and only making 30 cents a mile at England. That's more like what they pay. And that's disappointing. <laughs> you need to leave immediately. What are my thoughts on Ozark? I haven't looked into Ozark Motor Lines. I thought you work for Purdue. Yeah, I wish. I thought it was going to be paid 35 cents for all 5,000 miles. No, you're going to split it. So all the miles that the team drives, if they're paying 35 cents, split, which is hard to believe, right? But it's you get 17 and a half cents. Maybe they're saying you're going to get 70 cents split, which would be more like what a team might get today. Then it's not bad. Do you know of any companies that have uh, strict same-sex trainer? I don't have enough experience. And she wants, she can always request a female trainer. All these companies that I've looked at, every one of them, you can request a female trainer. She's going to have this problem, though. There aren't that many women drivers, and there aren't that many of those drivers that are trainers. So what they do, they'll say, look, you can have one, but you got to wait. She may have to wait weeks, a month or more. It depends, you know, so, and that's fine, you know, if that's what she wants. But she'll have to know that she may have to wait, wait, wait for a woman trainer. What's going on, Bluish Hue? What's happening on Tuesday? These companies had to give raises because people can start at Subway for 13, right? And you've seen baloney jobs for 15, O-S-C-A-R, right? M-A-Y-E-R. When did you get a rent? A while ago. James, uh, yeah, I drive for FedEx. Dang it, I got all these companies I drive for. After six months, you could make 46 cents on a dedicated route at England solo. 
Uh, I, that'd be unusual, but uh, may be possible. Ozark does overnight freight like FedEx, but who doesn't like overnight? And Amazon, if you don't like driving at night, you don't want to work for Ozark. But other than that, they're good. I'm solo, make 51 cents and 31 to stop. That's more like it. Your Swift mentor had years of experience and only cared about money. That's the other problem. You get a trainer, even though they have a lot of experience, they only want the money. And that's, uh, you know, they have it wrong. You know, they should be uh, wanting to help people first and then the money comes from that. So that person's not going to be really good at their job either. And that's disappointing. I don't know what to do about that. There's really hard to find people that want to do the job for the right reason. What I know about dynamic, I did a video about dynamic uh, transport there. I have a video up about them because they ran a ton of ads. Have I seen a tornado? Yeah, I see them off in the distance. I've never been really in one. So uh, other than, you know, just seeing it off in the in the field going around or whatever. Michael, I am always doing better here. <laughs> uh, Covenant pays uh, good for the Amazon account. Really? What is good? What would good be uh, considered at Covenant? Eric, start a podcast. Really? Huh? So that is not a bad idea. Really? You should check out the new podcast. How about that? <laughs> I should uh, start a podcast. I do have a podcast up at uh, truckinganswersnation.com slash podcast. How about that? So yes, podcast is up. How about that fancy stuff just like that? So uh, I will start a podcast and already have. Let's organize everyone shut down for 24 hours. Yeah, that's not going to work. In, that's not going to do any good. You're not going to be able to do it. The, oh, the shutdown, the only way a shutdown works is if you shut down one company at a time. Pick your company. It doesn't matter. Company X. And you close them on Monday. And you tell them, everybody there shuts down and sends a message that says, call uh, whatever driver at noon or whatever, and uh, they'll give you information, and that's how you do it. They'll have to give you a raise, and it has to be a large company, a large company, because so they see 2,000 truck stop, what are they going to fire you on the road? If you get fired, remember, you're not responsible for the truck anymore, so they fire you on the road, and you just leave the truck because you don't work there. They got to go recuperate 2,000 trucks? That's not going to happen. You're going to get your raise. You do that to a couple of companies. And then you call, start calling them and go, guess what? You're next to the next company. You are the next place that I'm that we're going to shut down. And that's how you do it. This nationwide thing is not work at all. It will not work. You're a former FedEx ground contractor, team driver. Uh, we always had to haul butt because they're freight. Yeah, but at least you're rolling, right? Not sitting around. Two streams in one week. Yeah, Jonathan, the week's not over yet either, right? So Dot Foods buys uh, female trainees a motel room every night. Oh, really? If they have a male trainer, that's great. Sometimes the trainer stays at the hotel so the trainee gets used to sleep in the truck. Wow. That is, I've never heard of a company doing that. That's really, really good. That way, that's a very good idea. Then people can get trained faster because Dot Foods has to be like every other place. There cannot be that many women drivers. There just aren't that many. We don't have that many either. So putting them in a motel saves them money from having somebody sitting around or quitting after their like really long hiring program because I know it takes forever to get hired on there. Am I home every night? Uh, yes, I am home every night. Live shows on Monday and Tuesday and the week isn't over yet. Yes. Uh, yeah, Gabe, a while ago I had to switch over to uh, do less at work so that I could do more trucking answers. I had to make a decision. I was either going to Continue, you know, all this work or continue all this trucking answers, one or the other. And this is way better. Uh, working less is always a good goal. GP Transco, 50 cents with two years up to 60. I'll try to recruit drivers. Hey, look, I like the place. You know, they roll you good. Nice trucks. I'm in. Joshua the Tanker, what's happening today? Uh, you think my channel was great in the past. <laughs> you do more company spotlight. Uh, I do all, as many as I can get to. Yes. Premier pays 55 cents a mile and uh, $60 for the stop. That's really good. If that's a company driver. No 1099 though. No special K changed. It is. Thank you. I appreciate it. Was. Hey, I'll take it even in the past tense. Your first trainer quit halfway through the training. That's always a problem and drop you and the trainer off in the pouring rain. 
and took the truck. Awesome. You can go in the trailer and stay dry, I guess. I was there for 12 hours before someone got me and gave you 100 bucks to comp you. You know, why don't they fire that trainer? That's the question, you know, for the company. He went through a snow tornado in Salt Lake City. Wow. I've been through those dust devils and some pretty big ones. I guess I've driven through what I would consider, I guess, a large dust devil that's come across the road where it shook the truck, but nothing like a big tornado or anything like that. Alex, the OTR driver, is going to have to check out early. That's all right. Well, I'm not staying too long today. Uh, Mark, can I still uh, do video on J.R. Shugel? Yeah, you know, I like their training program. I've looked into that training. Their training thing seems really good. So I have to get more information about the whole place, but I like how they do the training there. Women are smarter than us. That's why you don't see many of them. Yeah, probably. They know it's not worth putting them up with what we go through. That's correct, right? You're going to Blue Mountain, Mississippi. Ain't no mountains. Yeah, just cruise control there, right? Hey, uh, DWMS, thank you very much. I appreciate it. At the Best Trucking Channel, I'll take that. Thank you from Charlotte. Uh, your buddy's been a trainer for 20 years, and it has stopped because too many people that don't speak English have only driven a scooter before. Well, I don't know about that. We don't get, uh, you know, we take trainees too, and we don't get too many people like that. So part of the CDL, you know, people, oh, Mark, you're racist. No, part of the CDL program is you have to speak English. And I don't think it's racist to tell people, look, you need to know enough English to be able to take bills, you know, and read them to make sure that you don't have hazmat on them and stuff like that. You know, that's not racist. That's just safety. You need to be able to see what's on the bills. You need to know what you have in the trailer and stuff. That I think that's totally reasonable because that's the language that we speak here. And so people should know English to be a driver, certainly. The road signs are all in English, for crying out loud. Your trainer had 37 years experience. That's awesome. It taught you everything you knew, and training saved you. And he talk and still gives you advice. Now, there's a good trainer. Now, why don't that company ought to give that person a new truck every year and stuff like that? Somebody like that that wants to work, uh, you know, do the training and then help you later. Even after that, they're not being paid for that. That is somebody that's somebody who wants to train. We need more people like that in the uh, in the country and in the industry. Uh, will Crap Company of the Week a comeback? Uh, no, <laughs> not in that form. It has come back with things that we want to consider. Uh, no freedom of speech. Well, look, you, you can say whatever you want, but then people can, you know, take offense at it and kind of shut you down that way. It's a, it's a problem. So I've had to make some changes to the way I do things to keep it legit. You know, what's bad about being a company driver at Western Express? Uh, everything. <laughs> uh, what's in the podcast? Oscar. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that today. I really do. Thank you very much. What's in my podcast? Well, the first one talks about uh, how I got into trucking. And uh, the second one I'm talking about, you know, just stuff about in the industry. It'll just be trucking kind of things. Look, it's, uh, you know, it's not uh, Shakespeare or anything. It's uh, free over there at uh, truckinganswersnation.com slash podcast. It's going to be on iTunes and everything. It'll be just an extension of the channel here where I can get information out about trucking, stuff like that out to people that maybe don't have time to watch the channel or would rather listen to the podcast you know that kind of thing worth it checking out you know certainly worth checking out and uh, subscribe to it as well abf 100 percent top paid 62 cents 61 for vans oh and uh 24.93 hourly paid downtime when the truck breaks down or terminal weight paid safety meetings you should get that right nice pension nice non-matching 401k but you get a pension so worth it stay in motels absolutely i've always thought that was going to be a great place trainers should drive manuals i don't know i mean they don't train you on a manual car really i uh, love the channel we need crap company of the week in a different name well look we have uh you know things to consider about companies who cares if they get hurt here's the thing when you get dragged into court and stuff it costs a lot of money to defend yourself and that's what the problem is so you know, that they, you know, who cares? That's great. But, uh, you know, who cares is whoever's spending the money to have to travel to another state to go defend yourself in, you know, numerous kind of things that kind of, it just makes, it doesn't make monetary sense to do that. You know, when we could just change things around and keep it a little bit more, everything more things that you could say without people being able to sue you about it. Michigan, Indiana, and Illinois have truck speeds at uh, 60. A regular car semi should be able to go 80. Uh, 
uh, I wish the truck could go 80, right? But uh, we've had this tire discussion on here before. And, you know, at least trucks should be set 70, you know, 75 at least. That would get people some actual time. You can actually get stuff done that way. You don't have to uh, wait around 65 or, or less, 58 at some places. That shall remain nameless. Uh, I think I should invite recruiters and talk about pay. Yeah, we're going to uh, Red Classic wants to see me at the truck show. So we're going to go talk to them again. Having a guest will help. I agree. And thank you very much for that. And with this new technology, because I upgraded the laptop from 2.4 only to uh, 5.0 gigahertz. So it's allowing me to do uh, the live streams off of it. And uh, I am tr working on getting guests. That would be really great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Boathound. So uh, thank you, Eric. And look, Western Express, going back to that, because somebody asked about that. They're a second chance place. Don't go there. There's no good can come of it. Unless you have nine felonies or you have a bunch of tickets, DUIs, they'll take you then. And so then, I guess, if it's the only place you can get to. But tell your friend who's going there to go anywhere else but Western Express. Anywhere else, really. How many miles should you expect to average? You should expect to always average more than 2,500 miles a week if they want to keep you busy. Uh, if you work for an owner-operator, are you an independent contractor? No. If you drive someone else's truck, you are an employee. They may 1099 you, but they're misclassifying you. Anytime you drive someone else's truck, you work for them. They dictate your schedule. They tell you where to go, what to do. You're an employee. Michigan finally raised their speed to 65. I know, that took like forever. I thought Illinois would be the last one, and they weren't. Uh, I should do reviews with culinary artists. Oh, that work at the Iron Skillet and do an honest review. I like them. I don't know about culinary artists. Might be a, a stretch of it, certainly. <laughs> and if somebody, look, if somebody knows a recruiter or whatever and wants them on here, I'd love to talk to them. But, you know, they're going to get a grilling about cameras and uh, that kind of stuff. So some of them don't uh, really like that kind of thing. You know, they don't appreciate having to answer honest questions. They only want to talk about, oh, you can make a thousand dollars a week. Not, you know, oh, you're getting 30 cents a mile kind of thing. Kind of like Western Express doesn't really put out the uh, whole truth of their company. Like, uh, you know, people don't, if they're not in a truck, like you're off or whatever, they don't pay you. They don't pay you until you come back to work because they're afraid you'll quit and take the money. So, you know, that kind of stuff, they don't tell you all that kind of good stuff on, uh, on their channels or anything else, their podcasts and all this other kind of stuff that they do, like Driver Solutions that puts all these wonderful videos out. They don't tell you, you know, they start at 30 cents a mile over there at Pam. It's really uh, disastrous. Your truck goes all the miles per hour. Is this a bonus live stream? You're only used to Mondays. Yes, it's a special Matt's Week live stream in Matt's Week to, uh, this week because we'll be live all day Friday. And this Drive Safe Act popped up, and I wanted to see what you guys thought about it. So uh, about, you know, these young people driving in with a mandated camera, because once they mandate it for some people, remember that kind of stuff is coming to you. Mandated speed limiters, mandated uh, automatic braking. That's going to be mandated across the industry then because it'll work out good because all these people are going to be really watched closely. So they will have less accidents. And therefore, then it's going to come to you. They're going to go, oh, this is just great. We'll just bring it all to you as well. It's not these it's not the answer to the industry teach people to drive better and then you won't have as many problems don't all this electronic stuff because if somebody is taught to drive with all this electronic stuff and uh, so then they depend on it right from the beginning they never really learn how to drive otherwise and then it stops working you got you get a dashboard full of lights you actually have to drive the truck they won't know how that's why we have all these crashes how many videos are there about trucks crashing into bridges and going down all these weird roads and stuff? They're only following the GPS. People didn't learn, never were taught to actually use a map. Don't just sit there and trust the GPS. It's not the solution to anything. The Drive Safe Act, you should always drive safe. Yes, and it is more stress for the driver. It can be. How about, yeah, how about just driving safe all the time? Uh, one thing you know for sure, there's not a driver shortage. There's a speedometer shortage. The speed limits are too slow. It should go up for trucks, at least 70. People are so scared of 72-hour DOT crackdown. Yeah, in June, there's one coming up. I'm more scared of being surprised by the DOT. It does DOT crackdowns, you know, I never really even see that much extra activity, but we don't have a lot of money in Indiana. So 
mandate auto and speed limiters auto braking is why i bought my own uh, truck you know why don't they mandate speed limits for cars then at 65 Let's see how that goes over for them it's totally safe in montana where it's 80 for cars and 65 for trucks he has only three cars in the whole state did you see the qualcomm message sent up by western asking the drivers to write positive views uh, okay, I asked people to send me this. The only one I found is that Western Express asked their drivers to do a review. It did not say a positive review, okay? If somebody has a picture of that or a link to it, I'd love to see it. Every time I found it, it did ask their drivers to do a review. Would you like to do a review? Let us know. It didn't say a positive review. So some told me back in the day, Texas was 55 for trucks. Yeah, night, right? What? It would be bad going border to border. It, they had the day night signs. She remembers that. And the night one was black background and white letters. And the day one was white with black letters. Exactly. Use a map. Right. You should learn on a map. Learn on a map. Right. Okay. Right. Texas was 55 at night. Exactly. Day and night speed limits. Yep. Western Express is a place for those on work release. If your ankle bracelet will allow it. That might be a place to go. You have a felony. You've got DUIs that are pretty recent. You uh, killed your last dispatcher in a fight and the you know on the property and got fired. That kind of thing. If you can't get a job somewhere else and want to get a trucking job, that's the place. But otherwise, don't just go there if you can go anywhere else. You know, basically anywhere else. Back in 03, you delivered in Canada, French, in Quebec, used a fold-out map from a gas station. Worked well, yeah. Oh, I remember buying those, right? Love my Mac. GPS is good for time planning. Look, I use a GPS. I totally agree. But it's an aid. It isn't, you don't just count on it. Oh, I will, it's turn right here? Well, I guess I'll just turn right here. That's not the solution, certainly. Certainly. But the gas station maps, three bucks, right? I used to buy a paper atlas, a paper road atlas. You remember that when Texas had it, it wasn't that long ago that they did the day-night thing in Texas. Really, the signs were day and night, and it was 55 at night. It didn't. And it, that's the time you're already tired, and so what do they do? Slow you down to make it even worse. And uh, Houston to El Paso at night in Texas is like a four-day drive. It's just crazy that they made the speed limit go down. That was the stupidest thing I ever saw. But that is how they did it in Texas, really. I guess everything's bigger there except the speed, 55 uh, at night. Uh, maybe I'm the only one, just the two of us, but it wasn't any good. <laughs> Work really. Look, this Western thing, I'm begging you to have your friend not go to Western Express. Tell them go anywhere else but Western Express. That's the, that's the last place they should be going. Apply everywhere, and then when they all turn you down, then you go to Western. Western Convict should be their name. And Time Zone, that's a pretty good name, right? Uh, what's going on? Yeah, hey, yeah, sure. When What's happening out there today? Just uh, pop it in quick here on a Tuesday to talk about the Drive Safe Act with Todd Young from Indiana and Trey Hollingsworth of Indiana and wondering if they received any donations from the ATA or from Lytics Drive Cam system since they probably would uh, would really be ones that would be interested in it. I don't know. Lytics hasn't put anything out about it, but they're going to be all over companies trying to put their cameras in. Uh, why did it change? Because, uh, probably people griped about it too much. You remember 55 at night in Texas? It wasn't that long ago when it was 55 at night in Texas. 65 day, 55 night. Then they changed it. I mean, is there some reason you can't go more than 55 across, you know, on the out middle of nowhere in texas it doesn't make any sense people go 100 miles an hour there now uh you saw dot doing it better yeah dot i love dot foods and it's truly a great company oh you've been there good made 72 to start but uh, you touch the freight yeah they have touch and no touch and so they're pretty clear about that up front home weekend and you're 25 years old making seventy two thousand dollars a year that's life-changing money i mean that's really money and I think that's excellent. Look, look at where you're going to go. At 25, I probably made $30,000 a year or so, which wasn't that long ago for you people, ten, like 10 years ago. Uh, it's 80 in Texas now. Yeah, not for trucks, though. Right? Oh, or is it trucks? No, I think they do, right? Which is worse, England or Western? Boy, it's tough. It's really a tough choice. I don't know. I mean, England packs you in the truck, but, you know, Western packs you in the truck with 
felon, so I'm not sure. Reason California is 55 is the roads are so bad. If you go above, you'll leave your axles. Well, they should. that would mean Indiana would be 25. There's no one on the street at night to speed them. It should be 101. There's no reason you can't pick. It should have been faster at night, if anything, so that you got where you're going and could go to bed. Hope they don't force the uh, industry to have that collision mitigation they're going to. There was one in front of me and a shadow from the sign on the highway, and it braked. Yeah, hard. Exactly. That thing interacted. And so you think the driver's an idiot. The truck's hitting the brakes itself. Number one, truckers are mostly Vietnam vets and convicts. No. Most drivers look like young version of David Allen Co. <laughs> really? No. I mean, it's always been, you know, I don't know if they were convicts. Probably a lot of them were vets. Remember the signs were black and the 55 was white. Yeah, they reversed the color on the uh, signs. Didn't Montana have no speed limit? Yeah, RP, it was called reasonable and prudent until the government threatened to cut their freeway uh, spending. Also, because they're writing tickets in Montana, I remember reading about this, for people going 100, 110, and everybody got out of the ticket. Who's to decide what's reasonable and prudent, if not the driver? And so since it said RP on the signs, that might be prudent for you at that time. So nobody could, uh, they weren't getting any ticket money. You hate the drive cam, it only shows front and the driver. What about the side? Some, uh, you can install your own side uh, cameras. Uh, that shouldn't show you. It's all about insurance, yes. 40 years ago, 20000 was big money. Yeah, right, that was good money. So I've heard. Pennsylvania and Arkansas would be 15. <laughs> yeah, some states would just be, you couldn't drive at all. <laughs> Where's your blue wrench? <laughs> That's funny. Thors have ruined yet another industry. That's correct, right? As you, as usual. Uh, let's where did I go? Where my dot go? World Island fifty five because you can make it through the state. Yeah, they slow you down so that you'll have to stop. You just sent your link and the photo. All right, good. I'll uh, I'll check that out. Because the one I saw just asked people to do a review. It didn't ask them to write a positive review. Why are oversight loads only permitted in the day? It depends on the state. You know, some states, they only allow them at night. Some states, you can't go through rush hour. Some cities don't allow it. It's just crazy. Plus, at night, they figure you might hit it. It depends how big it is. If there's a sign that says no vehicles over five tons, can DOT really give you a ticket for 70,000 overweight? Yeah, absolutely. You're over 70,000 over. Absolutely. The trainer at Western is the parole officer. At least they know where you are. You like your collision avoidance? You're the only one. I don't like it. I don't like it to interact. I don't mind alerts, but I, I want to be the one to make the decision. Do we get a ticket if it breaks and someone runs into our back? Um, maybe. You know, you should be far enough away to stop if the vehicle in front of you stops. How about including company safety scores when you do your doing it better? Oh, that's good. From the Safer website? That's not a bad idea. Have auto braking and it's not good on ice. Exactly. It just slams the brakes on. Greetings from Queens. Yikes. Are you the king of Queens over there? Holy mackerel. Good luck with your day. You better be getting paid by the hour. Montana would look your way at tire rating and give trucks tickets. Oh, all right. That's not a bad way to do it also. Because it's not prudent or reasonable to drive beyond the capabilities of your tires. Oh, all right. But see, car tires are much higher rated. Four wheelers should be required for drive cams. Yeah. Volvo's going to start installing cameras in the car that points at the driver. Did you read that in their cars? And uh, it's going to determine if you're drowsy or not paying attention. It's going to put an alert on the dashboard. I just saw a thing about it because I'm a, I do a lot of stuff with cars. I'm a huge car nut. Putts right in the middle of everyone. Oh, that's good for Prime. I don't get too many of these Prime ones. Uh, please uh, ask your wife if we could have custody tomorrow. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, BW. Right, we'll see. Uh, I'll leave her a note. <laughs> oh, oh, there should be a dispatcher avoidance system. Yo, why isn't that in the truck? There should be a camera pointed at your dispatcher that you get to watch. That would be the better way to do it. Not having them watch you. Why don't we have a camera pointed at dispatch and we watch them? Oh, you'll see them sitting there uh, playing, uh, you know, Jenga and uh, eating their donuts and uh, all that kind of stuff. Not doing their job, you know, have a different screen there on their phone, Instagram and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, by, by percent, but dropped and parked ready for your tent. 
okay, well, percentage might not be too bad because it should pay more to go into New York City. Uh, does it glow? I don't know where, I'm, where I went with that. Volvo snitch cam. Well, the Volvo cam, uh, at least in the car, doesn't tell anybody anything. It's just supposedly to alert you. There's no reason. I guess it could record. I mean, who knows where that's going to go to at the moment. I'm not a fan of it either, and I certainly don't drive a Volvo, but uh, that is what they're putting in their cars. They just talked about it. <laughs> yeah, explode. That would be teamwork. If they get to watch us, why don't we get to watch them? Does the microphone glow? No, it's uh, because of the lighting and stuff. There's a light on top of it, though. Can't wait for a company to have uh, dispatched uh, uh, automated. There's no reason it can't do it right now, that a computer couldn't have just send you the next load. Uh, make it clear up Chicago traffic with raising the speed limit. All the stragglers and slackers. Yeah, get going. And do like the bridge over Kentucky, right? Why do we have to stop and pay a toll? Keep moving. How is it your fault if a four-wheeler is tailgating me if that collision breaks and he runs into my trailer? Uh, it shouldn't be your fault. The four-wheeler behind you should be far enough behind you to stop no matter what happens in front of them. It should be their fault. It dials 911 in the future. Cars can already do that, right? We do uh, the wife's escape has uh, E911 in it. And so if the car has an act, we have an accident and the airbags deploy, the car will call 911 on whatever phone is connected to the Bluetooth system. So they can do that kind of stuff already. Absolutely. Now, I guess in the future, it might call 911 if you're tired or it thinks you're drunk going over the line too much. That's a real problem. I remember doing your log in crayon uh, because it had to be blue or black and it's all I had. It says blue or black ink, I believe. Why are the loads uh, literally, uh, I don't know why the loads are not paying good. Because some companies and drivers will take 80 cent a mile loads, I guess. <laughs> That's why you're here. Yeah, because you get to at least take a break there. If the government wants to, where's their parking and flushing anyways? The government wants to regulate everything they do should make us employees with pension and perks. Oh, yeah, it's just ABF. You know, they regulate all this, then they don't give you anywhere to park, and uh, they don't make you get overtime and all that stuff, and then I wonder why they can't get anybody to drive. Is the CEO of Napping doing their job? Uh, yeah, uh, she, is, uh, she is, absolutely. Uh, this is why many dispatchers have multiple screen computers. They need one to play solitude and one to pick their fantasy teams. Yeah. And doesn't this March thing, there was some kind of March thing in the news or whatever. I don't follow the sports thing. <laughs> Truck drivers are the devil. Oh, solitaire, right? You know how to tell when a dispatcher's lying exactly his lips are moving. I've been getting great rates, but I haven't been south of 80 in two months. It depends, right? Isn't a rate... I don't do that much owner operators, but a rate is different for each person. A buck fifty may not be good for you. A buck fifty is good for somebody else. Two dollars, you know, it depends on what your expenses are. It's all expenses when you're running a business, right? So if your truck is, uh, you know, twelve hundred dollars a week, I guess a rate is going to be different than if you don't have a truck payment. Am I going to Mats? Uh, yes, I'm going to go to Mats, and I hope to see everybody there at Mats. So be in uh, Mats this weekend. Uh, be sure to come over and say hi because I don't know what you look like. So stop by and say hello. I'll be live as much as possible on uh, Friday, as much as possible. I don't know how much that'll be. There'll be multiple live streams. That's what I'm assuming. It'll go live and it may go back to not live and live again. Stop in any stream. Say hi. See what we're doing, asking questions, whatever. I won't be able to answer questions like this, but uh, I have, uh, you know, I'll be up there as much as possible live. Mm-hmm. I want to use OnStar to order a pizza. I don't know. Can you order a pizza with OnStar? My, I have it in the Sonic. I've never tried to uh, order pizza with it. Okay, so you can park at the customer at least because where else are you going to park in Flushing, right? Do I think lease drivers will disappear like Swift? Yeah. With these, uh, with all these rulings that are going on, basically a lease driver at, you know, is very close to being an employee depending on how the contract is worded. They're certainly going to have to reword contracts. And really, you're just an employee anyway that you rented your truck from them. If the whole country stops their trucks for three days, they'll get to the point like teachers' riots. Yeah, that won't ever happen. All you have to do is stop one company at a time. Just lock up one company's trucks and stop them wherever they are. For In a few hours, you'll have a raise. I mean, it's, you'll almost be able to do it on 30-minute break, for crying out loud. Can you lease a dispatcher? There are independent dispatchers for owner-operators. So... 
Kind of like Jay at Auto Transport Intel did. He was an independent dispatcher for auto transport loads. You know, and he's live tonight at uh, at 8 p.m. Central. So I'll be in the, there talking to him in the chat. So you should be over there too. But that's what he did, right? So he's an independent dispatcher. So yeah, you kind of can hire your own dispatcher, really. Uh, does, does the company I work for have terminals in Dallas, Fort Worth? Yeah, probably. I don't know. I've never been uh, that far for them. I've been all around the country, but not that way for them. So, yeah, most likely they do. DFW. Not in Flushing, though, where uh, there's really no parking. <laughs> so, well, it's close to 3.30, and I'm going to have to pop out of here again. I wanted to talk today live about the Drive Safe Act and uh, see if anybody would come on, which somebody did. So, a lot of you did, really. So, And I appreciate everybody coming on here again today. For live, it's a special Matt's week. I don't know how special it is, really. We'll be at the Mid-America Truck Show this weekend in Louisville. Be sure to stop by and say hello. Read the blog. Check out the podcast. Right? Write to me and uh, with all your things that you want to write in, whatever you want to do, questions. And uh, that's how that stuff works. And I am going to uh, head on out because I have to get to work again, as usual, and make the company some money. Are there any truck schools that I recommend? I haven't looked at truck schools. There's just so many of them, and each one is run independently, so it's hard to get. I recommend you go into, like, Yelp or that kind of thing and, you know, seriously, and checking out the reviews of them. That seems to be the best way to do it and talk to the people that work there. You're an employee, get 26% and see the broker sheet. You should see the sheet if you're getting a percentage. They should be happy to give it to you. And since they're giving it to you, that's the way to do it, right? If they're like, oh, we're not giving it to you, I'm not I'm not happy about that. Log your time in the dock on duty? Yes, we be all, you should be logging it on duty. That's how you do it. Have I started selling uh, trucking and merchandise? Uh, absolutely. There is a Teespring store. They should be somewhere under the video, too. Absolutely. So, Head over to Teespring at uh, Trucking Answers. Josh missed it. Hey, but it's a special Matt's week, certainly. <laughs> Oscar, I got to go because the company wants to make some money, too. Anyway, Thomas will be too far north. Hey, thanks, the Milvet. Thank you for being here. Super Trucker, Time Zone. Ivan, I will see you at Matt's. At ACDL in Albany, Georgia is another place to check out. So uh, that's it for today, and I am headed out to work. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And we, of course, will be back soon, as I always say, with more Trucking Answers.